The AA gradient is a very useful tool to determine how well the lungs are delivering oxygen to your blood. This video will go over an intuitive approach to understanding the formulas and calculations necessary to determine the AA gradient. Firstly, the AA gradient represents the difference in the partial pressures, or the amount of oxygen, in the alveoli and the arterial system. Basically, if theoretically all the blood that's destined to the lungs were all maximally oxygenated by the oxygen that is in the lungs with no inefficiencies, the difference would be zero. However, normally the AA gradient can be up to 10 millimeters of mercury of oxygen in a healthy young individual, and even slightly more as we age, roughly about an increase of 1 millimeter of mercury of oxygen every 10 years or so. If you were looking for a video explaining the reason for the existence of an AA gradient, please refer to the video in the description as this video goes more over the understanding of the alveolar gas equation. To calculate the AA gradient, we take the gradient or difference between the alveolar oxygen level, which is calculated, and the arterial oxygen level obtained from an arterial blood gas. The arterial oxygen level is obtained straight from the ABG lab test, so that's easy. However, the alveolar oxygen level requires the alveolar gas equation, and you may have seen it in any of the following, which are all the same exact thing written in slightly different ways. Before we dive into this though, I want to start off with a very simple but powerful concept, which is accumulation equals input minus output. A quick easy example of this is if we were to have a container of water and we put 3 liters in it, and then we pour out 1 liter, then what we end up with is 2 liters left, which is the accumulation. The alveolar gas equation is representing this exact same concept. Here we have an alveolus and a blood vessel capillary with blood that is ready to drop off some carbon dioxide and load some oxygen in its place. The term here represents the input of oxygen into the alveolus. The term here represents the output of oxygen out of the alveolus and into the blood. And the last term here represents the oxygen that it has accumulated in the alveolus. This amount of oxygen accumulated in the alveolus is what we want to solve for for the AA gradient calculation. We'll first start by breaking down the term here that represents the input of oxygen into the alveolus. And we'll use an example of a person that's breathing regular air at sea level where the makeup of air is mostly nitrogen at 78%, some oxygen at 21%, and 1% of other things. Carbon dioxide makes up only 4% of this remaining 1% of other things, or 0.04% of the overall air, in case you're curious. I'm going to represent a unit of air that we breathe in as this square that's broken down into its components. It's important to note that the pressure of air, because we are at sea level, is 1 atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury. As we inhale, this unit of air runs into the moisture or vaporized water in the airway in our bodies. This vaporized water has a pressure of 47 millimeters of mercury because of the temperature of our body. If our body were naturally colder, this pressure would be less, and if it were warmer, the pressure would be higher. But at our normal physiologic temperature, it's 47 millimeters of mercury. Just wanted to point this out because it's not just a random number that was pulled out of thin air. What happens when the unit of air meets this water vapor is the water vapor displaces 47 millimeters of mercury worth of gas from the original unit of air as it makes its way down the alveolus. This accounts for about 6% of the original unit of air. This means that the remaining 713 millimeters of mercury still has the same proportions of gas distribution as before, but some of the nitrogen, oxygen, and other stuff didn't make it in because the water vapor came in and replaced it. So in the end, the oxygen that makes it to the alveolus is 21% of the remaining 713 millimeters of mercury of air. This is mathematically expressed as this.
This expression again represents the input of oxygen in our accumulation equals input minus output concept. The term here represents the output, meaning how much oxygen is taken out of the alveolus and put back into the blood. You will notice that this term actually doesn't seem to have any expression representing oxygen, but this is actually hidden here in the ratio term. As discussed earlier, as the blood meets the capillary interface with the alveolus, the blood drops off carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. Conveniently, this exchange happens at a ratio of about 5 millimeters of mercury of oxygen for every 4 millimeters of mercury of carbon dioxide. This exchange rate is determined by how efficiently the oxygen is used to break down energy sources like sugars and lipids. If a person's diet were of purely sugar, the ratio would be 1 to 1. But in a normal person's diet who isn't eating just sugar cubes all day, the inclusion of other things like lipids and proteins decrease the overall efficiency to 1 to 0 0.8 or 5 to 4. This exchange thing is great and all, but this would require knowing how much carbon dioxide came into the alveolus. Thankfully, there's a solution. Because carbon dioxide diffuses very, very quickly, we can make the assumption that the carbon dioxide always equilibrates between the alveolus and the blood at the capillary alveolar interface. This means that we can further say that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide from the arterial blood gas is representative of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli. Now you may be questioning whether we can attribute this carbon dioxide to the amount that was solely picked up from the blood. Well, we talked about how carbon dioxide in the air was only 0.04% or about 0.3 millimeters of mercury of carbon dioxide, 0.029 millimeters of mercury of carbon dioxide if you account for the amount that got displaced by the water vapor and we usually see an arterial carbon dioxide of 40 millimeters of mercury, at least in healthy individuals. This means that the carbon dioxide that was breathed in was very, very, very small, and although we can technically say that 39.7 millimeters of mercury was picked up from the blood, we simplified this calculation by disregarding the breathed in CO2, since it's so small and inconsequential to the overall calculation. All this to say, that we use the amount of carbon dioxide in the alveolus to represent the net amount of carbon dioxide that was transferred from the blood into the alveolus. With that knowledge, we can calculate just how much oxygen was brought into the blood. Again, this term represents the output of oxygen in our accumulation equals input minus output concept. Now putting all of this together in a typical healthy young individual, Breathing air at sea level, we would expect to see that the alveolar oxygen pressure to be roughly 100 millimeters of mercury. Now, as mentioned before, the AA gradient in a normal individual is about 10 millimeters of mercury, and this is due to a couple of things happening in the normal physiology in our respiration called ventilation perfusion mismatch, or VQ mismatch, which we will discuss in another video. The link is in the description. Hope this was helpful. Bye!